So we had the ID TechX here in Berlin. And who are you? Hello, my name is uh, Richard Jans. I'm from uh, Brylands Material Center. So what is a Brylands Material Center? We are a research institute and we do all kind of inspiring innovations in materials. So is this a lot to do with 3D printing? Yes, we investigate materials for 3D printing. So for example, we have developed new materials for dental applications. So these are photopolymers for tooth uh, crowns and bridges, which can be implemented in the jaw uh, patients. So those are real? Like these they, are those can real. be used? Yes. It's not just for show? It's not for show. This is commercialized by our partner Nextend, and they are for sale. What is the material? Does it because the teeth they have to last a long time? Yes. And you have to be able to chew stuff. It's a lot of power. Yes, and a lot of abrasion as well. So this is a photopolymer, an acrylate uh, with a filler in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that it is. So yeah. So but so filler. There's a filler, and but around it is 3D printed or no? So it's only the tooth that is printed. This is actually to just to hold them and to to show them. So it's a tooth that's printed, and you're right. So the mechanical performance of a teeth is very important. Abrasion, but also mechanical strength. They need to be very similar to the to your natural teeth as well. But uh, we're doing an uh, extra new development because if you look at it very well, this teeth has one color. It's monocolor. But if you look at your teeth in your mouth, they have a yeah, look at my teeth. They have a, a shaded uh, or a shaded as gradient in the color. So if I put this teeth in the front of my mouth, you're going to see that. So the next development that we're doing, and that's very exciting that I can show you this because this is the first ever made uh, example of this, is that we're going to make a multi-material system in which we can include the color. So in this case it's blue, but that's only for showing. We're not going to print uh, blue teeth, of course, but we're going to include the color in the material system. When and you include make the color? It means that we're going to print one material in the other material, in the 3D printing. So that means it becomes yellow? If you choose yellow, it becomes <laughs> yellow. If you want it to be blue, we can do blue. We can do all colors. If your teeth are better than normal teeth, then it's like the super teeth and everybody will want to change their teeth. Is that, is that going to happen? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen because what's going to, if you put a teeth uh, between your natural teeth, it's going to erode out the natural teeth. So if it is stronger than the others, it's going to erode the other teeth away. That's not a good thing to happen. Uh, so it should be as natural, as close to possible to your natural teeth. That's the goal. If you bite somebody, it might be like an attack. <laughs> no, maybe that's not. the nice uh, thing of 3D printing. You could also, oh, there they go already. But uh, maybe there are some people that would like red teeth. Or maybe you want to have your flag printed in your teeth. Uh, flag? Oh, for the World Cup. For the World you Cup, really yeah. Nash, uh, like for your, for your team. Exactly. And these are some other examples of 3D printing. Yeah, so that's more in a general uh, example of 3D printing. There are several so different ways that you could do 3D printing. So this is what's called, it's uh, printing from a liquid, it's a photopolymer, and you get a very smooth uh, surface. In fact, this is the same material that we used for the for the, um, the gums of the tooth here. This is a similar one, but it's a different type of material. It's not filled. This is a uh, powder printing uh, technology, so it's uh, again a little bit different. But you see that it is uh, the surface is less smooth as uh, compared to the photopolymer, uh, the liquid uh, polymer printing. And here is another powder printing. It's a different material, but this one is more elastic. And again, because of the color, you see the layers in the frog. Uh, this frog is a, is a, it's a nice gimmick. It looks uh, funky, but uh, basically we use it because it's a very good example and we can really showcase the performance of the printer technology itself and the, and the process. Is it flexible so we can jump? <laughs> can try. Not, not quite, okay. Not but really, not yet. We need to train. You'll also show that uh, it can have a lot of detail? or This one, you yeah. mean? Now the car has a very different feature in uh, 3D printing. So one other thing that 3D printing can do that other production technologies can do is you can print and it, uh, it completely assembled. So this is a car, this was printed in one go. So there are many different uh, separate elements in here, but this is not uh, uh, put together later on. They're not printed separately, but they're printed in one go. Actually, the whole thing comes out of a printer like this. So completely functional, yes. So you can turn it up. And then, if you let it go, it goes. So this was printed in one go. It saves you several uh, um, assembly uh, steps in the process. Are you going to be able to print Swiss watches? <laughs> oh, yes, in the future. In the future? No, but it's a good idea, actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, clock? This uh, big clock? Uh, what, what is this bone about? 
You're not going to make bo bones, are you? No, we're not going to make bones. But uh, and actually, this bone is just a showcase. But what it does showcase is that we're working on scaffolds, medical scaffolds for uh, tissue engineering. So we're working with the University of Maastricht and they're doing a lot in material development. Because if you make a scaffold, for example, in a bone, but also in hard patches, uh, and you create a scaffold, the uh, cells of the bone are going to grow uh, back much better than uh, without the scaffold. So they can have the possibility to grow into the bone and that gives a much better result uh, healing than when you don't use a scaffold. So what does, what does that mean? Uh, in the future there will be 3D printed bones? Yes, part of bones, yes. Part of bones? Yes, and they will dissolve and your natural bone will grow back uh, into it. It'll be fine. But nobody right now is working on a 3D printed bone, right? They are. Some people are? They are. But yes, a lot of people what kind actually. Of bone? Like, are you talking about the hip replacement? No, something else. Yeah, that's a bit bigger. But this, <coughs> this, these are smaller parts. Uh, so, uh, and, and the people are working on a lot of uh, scaffolds for tissue, but also uh, soft organs, eh? like the heart and uh, the knee. Uh, that's already being done. Uh, what is this? This is the disadvantage of a lot of 3D printing objects is, is that you print in layers. And the problem is that you don't get the same mechanical performance in, the, uh, over, in, in all directions within the part. So in the Z direction you get a different performance, mechanical performance, than the X and the Y direction. So what we are working on is uh, starting a project to uh, print continuous fibers in the part meaning that we can completely control the orientation but also the position of the fiber within the part and that such we have full control of the mechanical performance of such a part all right and uh, wh what is that one you need to come in yeah so I, I have no clue what that is so i'm gonna yeah. learn here hi hi so who hi. are you um i'm a colleague from richard um i work as a research scientist also for brylands material center and uh this sort of objects um, are called metamaterials so Meta. three metamaterials yeah so so metamaterials um, are meant to be materials which display properties that regular materials or natural materials do not display on their own and in this case these patterning um, uh, features that you see inside this uh, red casing it's giving the functionality to the material so this brings the possibility to control uh, different uh, uh, optical properties or um, uh, magnetic properties of, of the material that you will not uh, naturally find in any uh, naturally occurring material. So this opens so many doors. Um, for what, for example? You could do, for instance, uh, an invisibility clock. That's what people claim. Uh, what? You, yeah, you You're going to do invisible. Why? Why, why is that going to help? Well, uh, you can think that if um, you are on a um, recommission, you don't want to be detected, right? So you can kind of cover your airplane yeah, with this sort of material. That, but but yeah. how, how is it going to... How are you going to be able to add that functionality to... Or, I mean, why, why is this going to be able to enable that? Well, the thing is that you, you, you kind of make it invisible to the um, different radio frequencies. Before you detection, yeah, you, you could do that. So that's that's. Well, but this pattern right here, what is it for? It's just an uh, example. This, this pattern is to demonstrate that that we could do any pattern that we want within the structure. So it's 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 up to um, the people with uh, the different applications to come with the need, what kind of pattern they need, um, and we demonstrate that it is possible with this technology to achieve that. So that's that's what we are showing here. That this is possible. Three D printed. It's 3D printed, yeah. So, uh, so uh, what's going on at the Brightlands Material Center? Is, uh, is there a lot of people? Yes, there's a lot of people. We have a lot of uh, students, we have our own uh, uh, researchers, and, but we also have a lot of uh, PhD students from University of Maastricht and uh, Eindhoven University. And they do our the fundamental uh, investigations for us and uh, we use that knowledge and uh, apply that to, uh, for customers and uh, companies to, into useful applications. Do you work together with the uh, host and the uh, yes. systems? Yes. There are many different uh, TNO institutes, and we work with a number of them. For example, this one we talked about. Uh, did we talk about? But this is uh, together yeah. with TNO, uh, the food uh, people in Zeist. What does that do? 
this is a model of the gut in your human body. So what they actually want to do is they want to make an artificial gut so they can test what microorganisms or what is happening in your gut when you eat a specific uh, type of food. But to mimic the human gut, you have to also mimic the, in test, the internal gut uh, structure. And the internal gut structure has villi in it. So that's on this yellow part, you see very little hair-like uh, structure. Can you see that oh. on the camera? Uh, this villi structure, we have 3D printed. But that's not good enough for microorganisms. They need more. They also need this to be permeable. So the nutrients that they need to eat and uh, the water uh, that they live in needs yeah. to go through the structure. So this, in fact, is a permeable uh, structure. Wow. Cool. So uh, 3D printing, there's a lot of things are happening. Yes. Did you have huge machines, like some really cool 3D printers? Yes. What do you use to do all this? We use, typically we are a research institute, so we try to use, or we want to use printers that are uh, open. That means that they uh, are very controllable. We want to be able to control all the parameters, play around, go open to source. the limits, open source, open materials, uh, and open software. So we typically, sometimes we need to make our own uh, printers, otherwise that's not possible. Own, you make them open source? We make them open source, yes. So you have some good ones you made yourself? Yeah. Our sister organization, AM Systems, make the printers for us. We are fully focused on the materials, so we have nice. company there.